Hello guys, back again at Allo Recaps. Today we will recap a story from a 2023 movie, Shooting Stars. In a small town called Akron in America, there are four young people who are close and often hang out together. They not only live in the same neighborhood, but also come from similar social backgrounds, namely middle-class black families. At the time, their lives were filled with intense basketball training, guided by one of their fathers, Mr. Drew Joyce. They were preparing to participate in a small tournament at the district level. And in that competition, they stood out and were undefeated. Among these four friends, there are two very talented ones, namely Willie McGee and LeBron James. In the team they founded under the name, The Shooting Stars, they dreamed that one day, after succeeding in becoming prominent professional basketball players, they would stay together. They envisioned a future where they would still be neighbors, even having an underpass connecting their homes, as well as building a basketball court in their yard to continue playing together. As they entered their teens, these four friends remained close and continued to develop their basketball skills. Now, they are looking forward to the next step of entering high school. All of them plan to enroll in the top school in their area, Buktal High School. Mr. Drew Joyce who has a relationship with the basketball coach at Buktal High, is trying to help them join the school's basketball team through persuasion. Buktal High School has an impressive record of achievement in basketball. The school's basketball coach, Coach Sam, holds an orientation session to introduce the location and history of the school's basketball team to prospective students. Although everything sounded promising, there was a moment when Coach Sam seemed to look down on little Drew who was smaller in stature. After returning home, little Drew felt a lack of confidence. He felt that Coach Sam's attitude might indicate that he would not be accepted into the school's basketball team. As little Drew was reluctant to be separated from the formation of the shooting stars, he began to look for other alternatives. It just so happened that at that time, there was a former NCAA coach who was downgrading, and intended to coach the club basketball team at St. Vincent's High School located in the city of Akron. With confidence, little Drew went to Keith Dambro, St. Vincent's coach, and expressed his desire to audition. Initially, Dambro did not pay much heed to his request as the selection was scheduled to take place a few months later. However, little Drew was determined. He showed off his three-point skills, while letting him know that he had a group of friends who could potentially help him succeed. If Dambro's previous NCAA teams had, the Fab Five, consisting of Juan Howard, Chris Weber, and Jalen Rose, little Drew suggested that his coach's team will have a group called, The Vapor, consisting of his gang, The Shooting Stars. Although still reluctant to make a decision, Dambro was amazed by little Drew's confidence and skill. After visiting St. Vincent, Little Drew persuaded her friends to forego enrollment at Buktal High and instead enroll at St. Vincent. The school offered a scholarship program that would allow the four of them to attend school for free. However, a problem arises, namely the fact that St. Vincent is a predominantly white school for Irish immigrant children. This meant that the four of them would be different, and might feel out of place in such a school environment. Little Drew spoke with his father, and explained that the four of them had agreed to enroll at St. Vincent. Although the father considered that this move might cause them to be branded badly by the people in Bukto, the neighborhood where they lived, Mr. Drew supported his son's ambition. In the end, these four kids made it to St. Vincent, a private Catholic school known for its academic achievements rather than sports. In this school, they were a minority group amidst the majority white students who were the pillars of the school. After joining the audition, they ended up meeting some friends who were also black. As it turned out, Jermaine and some other players who had previously formed a team and came from the same foundation, were now also part of St. Vincent High School. This is why they had never met before in the school environment. Now, they have the opportunity to get to know each other. Keith Dambrod applies a very intense physical training approach as part of his methods in the selection process. Those who showed fatigue, weakness, or lack of enthusiasm were automatically removed from the roster. Prospective team members undergo intense and prolonged training. When faced with preparatory matches, the St. Vincent team performed poorly, and were often easy targets for their opponents. The junior members, known as the Fab Four, often found themselves on the bench. Then, one of them, Willie was given a chance to play. But unfortunately he rarely got a pass from his teammates. Willie had to rely on his own efforts to win the ball, even making interceptions from opponents. After the match in the locker room, the four boys talked about the challenges faced by their school team. They felt confident that if they had competed as teams, the situation would have been different. Their conversation was overheard by the seniors, which led to a conflict. The dispute ended with an agreement that they would have a matchup game at a basketball court in a city park. 
The next day, they all came to the city center field. A match pitting the senior team against the junior team. To make it even, Jermaine sent someone to be the fifth player for the Fab Four, the most slender person among his generation. But in fact, this fifth person was not important to the Fab Four. Even though they had fought back, St. Vincent's seniors were also beaten by their juniors. LeBron with fun kicking here and there, making the confidence of his seniors fade. The cohesiveness of the Fab Four who have been playing together for a long time, is very compelling with the appearance of the senior team who often misunderstand. Coach Dambroud watched the match from the sidelines. Once the uneven match was over, he was invited by little Drew to have dinner at his house. Then talking with Mr. Drew, he listened to the stories about four of his students who have a passion for basketball. The story of Willie, who had to face challenges with parents who had high expectations. And with great determination, he decided to get involved in basketball to maintain his health. Little Drew, a determined young man, and LeBron, an orphan with a kind heart and amazing talent. The coach deeply appreciates Mr. Drew's dedication over the years, for helping his four protégés stay on the right track. In the opening match of the competition, Dambroud made the bold decision to start Willie as a junior high school player. Willie had a reputation for brilliance, even more brilliance than LeBron. The St. Vincent's team did very well in its games, and things only got better with a second junior joining the team. LeBron was then inserted by Dambroud. The collaboration between the two managed to liven up St. Vincent's attack with a more frightening intensity. Seeing this positive development, the coach then decided to field all members of the Fave Four together. This decision drew dissatisfaction and discomfort from the parents of the upperclassmen, who felt that having their juniors play took precedence over their children in the senior team, and that was hard to understand. However, they did not know what would happen next. What they saw then was a team that had a deep understanding of each other's game, knowing exactly how teammates would move on the court. LeBron James was the backbone of the scoring, with the Fave Four as the starting lineup. Victory after victory was achieved by the school, and their reputation skyrocketed. LeBron James began to be recognized as one of the best young players in the state of Ohio. His name became phenomenal, and he was considered the young star of American basketball. Keith Dambrod, who was previously considered a less successful coach, was now being recognized again. Slowly, the St. Vincent team's ranking began to rise and eventually reached number one. The four members of the Shooting Stars, or the Fab Four, became the most famous figures in the city of Akron. They would often get free food when shopkeepers recognized their presence among the patrons. Along with St. Vincent's achievements, Scorn began to attack them often. Mr. Drew's car was attacked by Buchtel residents in the middle of the road. To further strengthen the formation, Mr. Keith Dambrod then appointed Mr. Drew to become an assistant, and recruited a new player who was good at defense to complete the formation of the Fab Four. His name is Romeo Travis, this player is very puffed, Romeo never hesitates to open a brawl. One day, LeBron's fame finally reached New York City and caught the attention of America's most prestigious sports magazine, Sports Illustrated. A staffer from the magazine even dubbed him, the new Michael Jordan, or, the new Kobe Bryant. Reporters from the magazine planned to monitor the young basketball star's progress. At the time, St. Vincent was facing a very boring game, against a team that offered no challenge at all. The opponent's failure, even made the opposing cheerleaders look more like supporters for LeBron and his teammates. Inspired by the atmosphere, that night the boys from St. Vincent's became brave, enough to attend a party held at the opposing team's place of residence. When they got there, they didn't have to worry about being intercepted at the door. The members of the visiting team and their cheerleaders welcomed the shooting stars kids like they were the arrival of the stars players. Then they partied together. There accidentally, LeBron spilled his drinking water on a girl's shirt. He then followed her to apologize. It turns out that this girl is not from the visiting team, but a resident of Buchtel. Her name is Savannah who will later become the queen of King LeBron. At first they were angry, finally they became acquaintances and then continued with the next date. Then it was time for St. Vincent to take on their local school team, Buchtel High School. This match had deep meaning for the dignity of the black residents of the Buchtel area. In this match, Little Drew was passionate and eager to prove himself as the best. He had felt neglected, and called derogatory names by the locals. In fact, it was a match that Little Drew and the St. Vincent team had to face with great effort. Throughout the match, they were often the target of taunts. The score was always behind the opposing team. Finally, when the last round started, 
the coach decided to replace little Drew with a reserve player. But the opposite was true. With strong determination, little Drew refused to leave the field. He was determined to keep playing. This boy really wanted to silence his bullies. In the last six minutes of the game, the little Drew was really trying hard to prove himself. He scored three points upon three points, up to six in a row, leading the St. Vincent's team to chase down the points. The end result was a victory for this Irish school team, who managed to beat a local team that had a winning tradition. In that enthusiastic atmosphere, the St. Vincent team then received a very surprising news leak. Before the final state championship match, a journalist suddenly said that coach Dambrod had signed a contract with the University of Akron team, without the knowledge of all his team members. Of course the news made a team member upset, the coach immediately told his players to gather in the locker room, but what happened on the field was that the St. Vincent players in that match played carelessly. They no longer seemed to heed the instructions of the coach, even though they were still ahead in the score. As a result, the atmosphere in the team became chaotic. There were arguments between the coach and the players on the sidelines. Not wanting to be underestimated by the high school kids, Coach Dambrod finally decided to leave the field. Mr. Drew tried to explain that his students were used to being left out, and they would surely feel angry if they were ignored once again. However, Coach Dambrod seemed reluctant to engage in emotional expressions. He simply said his goodbyes and left, leaving the team under the guidance of an assistant coach. Even without the presence of the head coach, the St. Vincent team still managed to win the match. The continued winning streak has put LeBron James's name in the spotlight. A crew from a well-known magazine reported that they were planning to come and tell the story of this new phenomenon in American basketball. This news made little Drew feel a bit sad, because only LeBron was getting attention. Even so, his loyal friends continued to support him, by attending the photo shoot for the magazine with LeBron. In the issue, LeBron James will be the cover story. Excited about her son's potential future career, LeBron's mother gifted him a brand new Hummer. She was confident that her son's future would be bright, and that they could afford the car payments. After appearing on the cover of Sports Illustrated, LeBron is increasingly recognized by the entire population. Wherever he goes, he is always the center of attention. One fan even gave away his prized jersey collection so he could take a picture with LeBron. Savannah, who is supposed to be the queen of LeBron's heart, instead looks like an assistant. A joke from LeBron made this girl start to get angry. At the time, the boyfriend said that Savannah had won the jackpot, so she didn't need to worry about her future. Savannah immediately became angry and said that her boyfriend had become arrogant, despite the fact that he was just a school player. She questioned what would happen if LeBron actually became an NBA player. This unhappy expression from this girl made LeBron silent in his thoughts. The following season, after coach Dambrod's tenure ended, Mr. Drew rose to become the head coach. In his speech, he urged the players to forget the previous year, as this year they would face a different challenge they would be competing at the national competition level. A similar message was also expressed by Savannah. The team, especially LeBron, needs to keep from losing focus. The St. Vincent team also had to traveling the country that year, to play away games out of the state of Ohio. That year, the St. Vincent team's play became more solid. They mercilessly destroyed their opponents. The solidity of the team's play was supported by Romeo Travis's slick performance, which increasingly blended with the unity of the team. Now, the leaders of the shooting stars have officially recognized Romeo as their fifth member. As such, the Fave Four has now become the Fave Five. Team St. Vincent continues its march towards the top of the table. They are only one place behind the first-placed team, Oak Hill Academy. The time had come for them to face the table-topping team at the opponent's home ground. LeBron suddenly received a message, invited to attend a party held by the opposing team. However, the only one invited was LeBron himself, who was considered the star of his team. The rest of the players felt resigned, although jealousy still haunted them. The match itself drew the enthusiasm of American basketball fans. Two of America's best young talents would be performing. LeBron James from St. Vincent, and Carmelo Anthony from Oak Hill. While Anthony was ready to warm up, LeBron was actually nauseous backstage. The effects of last night's party left him suffering from an excessive hangover. In that match, LeBron ended up performing below his best. The other players, especially Willie who remained brilliant, could not keep up with LeBron's star performance. He looked overwhelmed and burdened. As a result, the St. Vincent team had to lose. After the match, Mr. Drew saw how poorly LeBron performed. 
he revealed that one of the keys to success is how LeBron manages pressure and outside distractions. Mr. Drew asked LeBron to focus more on developing his career. After that match, Mr. Drew finally became increasingly strict with his players. The focus remained on LeBron, although among the team members themselves, there was envy as their teammates' profiles shot up. Especially little Drew, began to feel frustrated as he felt the need to always provide support for his friend. The differences that began to emerge within the team caused their play to become less organized. Little Drew became even more self-centered. As the coach's son, he always wanted to prove his worth. Against a supposedly weak team, they had a hard time. LeBron and Little Drew even got into fights on the court. Their bickering affected the team's spirit which became restless. As a result, the team suffered another loss. After the match, the atmosphere in the locker room was quiet and tense. Coach Drew was so angry that he couldn't utter a single word. He could only release his frustration on an innocent gallon of water. The impact of LeBron's popularity also affected Willie. He began to doubt his own abilities, whether he was adequate to be a good basketball player. Luckily, Willie had an older brother who always supported him in all his activities. His brother managed to help raise Willie's spirits. In a conflict-ridden atmosphere, the Drew family home is suddenly visited by former coach Mr. Keith Dambrod. The point guard of the graduated University of Crown team, he offered little Drew to replace him. Although the initial reaction was not so positive, Mr. Dambrod remained professional. He did not want to mix his personal feelings with his work matters. Going forward, little Drew will be an assistant coach under Mr. Keith Dambrod. That reason eventually became the uniting factor for the Fab Five. They chose not to let personal feelings interfere with the future of their careers. Together, they are committed to getting back on track. The next big question they had to face was how they would fare against a team from Oak Hill Academy on their home turf. This match has once again attracted the attention of basketball fans. LeBron James, again challenged to prove himself, that he is indeed the best young player in America. Fortunately, this St. Vincent team has previously equipped themselves with team cohesiveness. With the support of solid colleagues, LeBron can now be more cool to beat opponents. The Fab Five's game this time was without gaps, all players performed with Prima. They also won the match. In his interview, LeBron this time gave great appreciation to his colleagues. Without them, he wouldn't be the LeBron he is today. After a big win, the St. Vincent's camp, especially LeBron, had to face very bitter news. The Ohio Student Athlete Association alleges that LeBron took bribes. This accusation came after a photo was seen, where LeBron was with a fan who had previously given a Washington Bullets jersey as a gift, which turned out to have a value of more than $2,000. Although the allegations are cruel and speculative, according to the rules, student players are prohibited from accepting expensive items from outsiders. The school felt it was difficult to defend LeBron, given the brilliant image he had built. A student who appears with a Hummer car is considered a difficult figure to defend. LeBron faced the threat of being suspended until the end of the season. Finally, the decision was taken. For LeBron, this was a heavy blow that he had to take. Nevertheless, all members of the Fab Five continue to give their full support. The next game was a decisive one for St. Vincent, as they had to play without their main star. Despite not playing, LeBron still came to support his teammates. Without LeBron, facing a mediocre team felt like fighting a championship team. St. Vincent had to fight hard to rival their opponents. Luckily, the team's cohesiveness was maintained. St. Vincent won the match and made it to the state championship finals. Seeing his friends will compete in the state championship without him, makes LeBron a little brooding. Confide in his mother, LeBron came to realize, that he had to do as much as possible to achieve what he hoped for. Then LeBron went forward to appeal to the assembly of the Greater Ohio Athletes Association. The head of the association himself was surprised, why LeBron had to bother to appeal everything, even if he didn't play in the state championship final, he was still the target of the NBA team. LeBron then explained his motivation. In this case, he did not think about the achievement problem. LeBron was more concerned, that this moment was his last chance to play together, with friends who had been friends since he was a child. As a teenager who was about to become an adult, he did not want to lose that opportunity, before a few months later they would all be out of high school. The assembly was touched by LeBron's defense. They realized, that this defendant was only a teenager. They then, revoked his sentence and allowed LeBron James to play for San Vincent in the 2003 final. Thus, LeBron James ended up playing in the finals with St. Vincent and as we all know, they finally won the championship for the third time. 
The moral value to be conveyed in this movie is actually not in the problem of LeBron James alone, but in the value that we may progress, but do not forget the people around. Until now, LeBron is still friendly with all members of the Fab Five. Willie is even on the board of the foundation founded by the King James. Little Drew is still an assistant coach to Keith Dambrod, and Mr. Drew Joyce is still the head coach of the Fighting Iris basketball team. His work with his friends in these shooting stars, indeed in the end became a bridge for James to successfully penetrate and become a legend in the NBA. So what do you think about this movie? If you like it please click like and leave a comment for this video, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss a video from Allo Recaps, see you next video.